On my kicker tonight, it was heartbreaking earlier today to watch the agony in the face and hear the pain in the voice of the mother of David Chege, the unarmed peaceful protester shot dead outside parliament a month ago today. And my heart bleeds for families of 60 Kenyans killed alongside David Chege. And I can only imagine the nightmare of the families of 66 Kenyans who remain missing to date in circumstances related to protests that swept our country the last one month. And as the country marks one month since that hair-raising and unprecedented invasion of parliament, there should be no denying that the events of the last one month constitute a turning point for Kenya. Within the month, a finance bill was withdrawn and an entire cabinet dismissed, both in response to the demands of protesters fronted by the youth Gen Z. Out of the scary events of a most turbulent month, all of us as Kenyans must proceed to our respective quiet corners for some deep reflections. First, we must reflect about the grievances that so enraged fellow Kenyans to the point of defying death itself. When peaceful young Kenyans armed with flags, mobile phones, and water bottles bravely marched through jets of rain, water, uh, water uh, and thunder of life gunfire, then we must reflect. We must reflect when a young lady clutching a flag dares an armed police officer to do his worst. We must reflect when a young man, instead of taking cover, dares to climb the top of that visibly intimidating police water cannon. We must reflect when instead of cowering in fear, young protesters sing and chant in defiance at the back of police trucks and behind the grills of police cells. Overall, we must reflect on what the month must change forever about our country. Let's talk soft issues first. First, arrogance was in the grievances list last month. Young protesters told us about basic rules of engagement between those who govern and those who are governed. Instances were cited of government officials talking down at citizens, ignoring the views of the governed, and generally proceeding with that attitude of mtadu. And the finance bill itself had been pointed at as an illustration of governance by arrogance for arrogance. Secondly came impunity. Remember the public display of unaccounted for opulence? That month forces us to reflect. Thirdly, the churches. The pulpit once stood for the good word of the Lord. Events of the month reminded us that as protesters proceeded to the platform politicians who had long taken control of the holy mic from the clergymen. Fourth, they told us about integrity and that holders of public office must be persons of integrity. You can't be a corruption, murder, or rape suspect and still be a holder of a high office such as cabinet secretary. How basic was that? As we reflect on the soft issues, let us remember the hard ones too. First, the value of life in Kenya remains worryingly low. The ease with which Kenyans kill fellow Kenyans is disturbing. And this goes to the National Police Service. Something needs to change. Rex Kanyeki was unarmed. He was shot dead. David Chege was holding a flag and a, water, and a water bottle. He was shot dead. Denzel Omondi had a flag and a mobile phone. He was abducted, killed, and his body dumped in a quarry. In total, tonight, 60 Kenyans were killed, a majority of them 
by police. Now, to police officers, especially those of the plain clothed and hooded hit squad category, killing and abducting fellow Kenyans, fellow citizens, for political reasons, shames your crown and stains your uniform. It reduces you from a police officer to a private, hired, partisan militia or gang member. Let us reflect. That is my kicker.